Well, it's a joy for me to be standing before you today. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that uh, I actually made it through the end. I, I remember um, my first semester staying up late trying to finish my hermeneutics project that was due the next day and uh, whimpering to my wife, <laughs> I can't do this. And uh, I, don't, I don't remember what she said, but I remember being encouraged. And uh, by God's grace, I, I finished that project. And by God's grace, I'm standing here before all of you on the verge of uh, finishing seminary altogether. Uh, my name is Sungwon Jang, more easily known as SJ. And uh, I, um, I'm the third child of uh, Korean immigrants. They came here in the early 1970s. I was born in uh, Southern California. And uh, my parents, they, they gave me a, a godly example growing up. I have fond memories of uh, family worship, singing hymns in English and Korean, and my, my father uh, leading um, times of Bible study. And I think that really laid the foundation for my conversion in the seventh grade. Um, it was at a, a youth camp that God showed me that, being, that growing up Christian doesn't make you a Christian. It's Christ who makes you a Christian. And so this, at this camp, this was the first time I recognized the sinfulness of my sin and my need for a Savior. And from that day, my life was never the same. Uh, all of a sudden, I had these new desires that God had given me. All of a sudden, I, I desired to read His Word, which I had never done before on my own. I had a desire given my God to, to love church. And so I, I love to go to church and to, to be with his people. And I wanted to talk about Christ and see how Christ affected could affect every area of our lives. And so even at this young age, I had a desire for ministry. Um, but I, I didn't feel the call to ministry uh, until after I graduated college. And uh, I, I experimented with uh, many different careers and somehow I ended up in India trying to make a documentary of a ministry there. And it was uh, one day during a break that I was looking out on the Indian landscape. And as I thought about the billions of people there who didn't know Christ, um, the, the verse Matthew 9, 37 came to my mind, the harvest is plentiful, but the, wor the workers are few. And I just had this very strong conviction that I needed to go to seminary and to be trained. And so I got back to the States. Uh, my pastor affirmed me in my decision. And so I enrolled in a seminary. And soon after, I became a junior high pastor at my church. And I immediately felt my inadequacy, um, especially in my inability to preach God's word to my students, especially on Saturday nights. Every Saturday night, it was a long, they were long nights of uh, weeping and gnashing of my teeth. And, uh, but I, I expected over time that I would improve, you know, with my, with my training from the seminary I was attending. But uh, that Saturday, Saturday night struggle continued all through those four years that I had been training there part-time at that seminary. And so um, it was uh, then in God's sovereign hand that he, he brought a, a special guest speaker to one of our youth retreats. He was actually a, a graduate of the Master's Seminary. And uh, there was something about the way he preached that really grabbed me. He, he, just, he preached with so much conviction. He, he preached with so much clarity and, and just uh, that he, it was just so thoroughly biblical. And so I remember um, at that time, um, it was just, uh, it, it just gave life to my soul hearing the word preached like that. And so I remember, um, talking to some of my students uh, about the preaching, about the sermons, and they were saying uh, how he was such a great pastor and how he, he, you could just tell that he knew his Bible so well. And uh, they were, I, I know they weren't trying to compare me to him, but I, I just couldn't help but compare me to him. And I thought, what about me? Am I a good pastor? Do I know my Bible like he does? And so I became increasingly aware that the seminary I was attending, um, it wasn't giving me a biblical foundation, and therefore it wasn't equipping me to be an effective pastor. Uh, also in God's sovereignty, uh, 
my future brother-in-law began attending the Master Seminary. And so uh, he would tell me about his time there. And uh, I have to admit, previously I had a negative perception of the Master Seminary. Just hearsay here and there uh, gave me a negative perception. But when he told me about the seminary and his professors and, and how gracious they were and how, how pastoral they were and how sitting in, in those classes were just so edifying my, um, and how they were so uh, personally involved in his life, my, my perception began to change of uh, the seminary. And, and then um, he came home from the Shepherds Conference with a bag full of uh, great books that he had gotten for free and uh, I, it was th that was pretty much it for me at that point. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, um, I, I started looking into the seminary more seriously. I visited the library. I got a hold of the books written by the faculty and um, I knew I needed to be at a seminary that was not only full of uh, scholars but uh, also um, scholars who were pastors who could model what it means to be a pastor for me, uh, what I wanted to become. And so uh, I turned in my application. I enrolled at the Master Seminary in the fall of 2009. I, I had the opportunity to transfer the 40 units I had accumulated, but I decided not to because I wanted to get the full experience, which I am so glad I did. And um, there's, there's so much more I could say, but I guess I would just encapsulate my time just from the very beginning at the orientation. Uh, I remember... Um, that day, the various professors were giving the seminars on how to prepare for seminary. And I remember just being brought to tears because as they were teaching um, me from God's word, I, I realized that in this one day, this one day, they had given me more biblical, more practical, and more pastoral teaching that I had received throughout all those four years at my previous seminary. And so um, I'm not trying to say that uh, God can't use that other seminary to equip men for ministry. I'm just so thankful that God brought me here. Um, there's so much more I could say, but uh, I guess I'll just say that coming to the Master Seminary has totally changed my life. Uh, people who uh, knew me before and after, I believe they can testify to that, that I today am a different and a better man uh, because of my time here, not because of the place itself, but it's because this place has brought me in contact to God's Word so that I can know how to learn it, so I can learn how to live it, and so that I can teach it. And so I just uh, give uh, God all the glory and I can testify that Jesus' words at the end of the Sermon on the Mount are true that uh, everyone who hears his words and acts on them builds his life on a rock. Um, I, I have to thank God for my wife, um, who's not only been my enduring partner, but she's also been my loyal secretary. And uh, I, I just, I can't imagine being here without her. I have to thank my, uh, my three children, Elise, Zoe, and Isaiah. Uh, each of them brings me joy every day to my parents, my parents-in-law, my, my brother and sister, my brother and sister-in-law, and to my Open Door Church family, just for their faithful support these past uh, eight years. Uh, as for my future plans, I, I plan to continue serving at uh, LA Open Door Church, and Lord willing, in a full-time capacity upon my graduation. We serve a God who is faithful, and I praise him because he is faithful indeed. Thank you.